StreamYard is one of the best live streaming software options for Mac, Windows PC, iPhone, and Android, so all the major platforms right now. In this video, we're running through a complete StreamYard tutorial so that you can learn how to live stream like a pro with StreamYard in just a few minutes. Hey, it's Justin Brown from Primal Video, where we help you grow an audience and scale your revenue with online video. If you're new here, make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. So StreamYard is one of my favorite live streaming software options because it is so easy to use, yet it's really powerful as well. There's some amazing features in there, things like being able to easily bring in multiple guests into your live stream, but also to be able to easily simulcast or push your live stream out to multiple platforms, literally with the click of a button. So whether you're brand new to live streaming or you're already a seasoned expert, this is going to be a complete end-to-end -end guide to StreamYard. We'll start with how to quickly get you set up and running, then progress into some of the more advanced and cool stuff that I mentioned a little bit earlier, like bringing in multiple guests and video overlays and all of that fun stuff. So make sure you stick around to see what's possible and how you can easily incorporate it into your live streams. All right, so we're over here on StreamYard.com. Now, if you don't have an account yet, you can just come up here to get started, enter your email address, and that will create a login for you. Or if you already have a login, then you can just press login. So I've got one, I'm just gonna go login. And I'm gonna log in. It's gonna send me out a six digit code so that I can enter that in here to log in. And now we have access to the StreamYard backend. So the first thing you'll see here is that we've got broadcasts over here on the left to create an upcoming broadcast or to see any of your past broadcasts. You can access all your account settings and things up at the top. You can create a broadcast here. We can then go over to destinations and this is where you can link up things like your Facebook page, your YouTube account. You can see I've already got Facebook linked up, our Facebook page. Let's add in another destination. So we're gonna go ahead and pick YouTube channel, go through and pick our Primal Video YouTube channel, grant it access, and your YouTube channel was connected, you're all set. So now when we go back to destinations, you can see that I have YouTube channel and the Facebook page. So you can go and hook up all of the destinations or all the different places that you would like to be able to stream to. And what's pretty cool is this is actually one of the first places that actually has LinkedIn live support as well. So we'll go back to broadcast now now that we have our destinations set up, and let's go create a broadcast. Now in here, we get to choose where of those destinations that we just set up, Facebook or YouTube, we'd like to broadcast to, or we can add in a new destination if we click on this one, or we can skip going live with it, and we can just do a video recording as if we were live, but just as a recording. And if we wanna select multiples here, we can select Facebook and YouTube by selecting both of them. Now, if we unselect YouTube and we go back to Facebook only, you can see that we can give our live stream a title and a description, and we can also schedule it for later. So if we don't wanna go live right now, then we can actually upload a thumbnail image for our live stream. We can schedule the start date and time for our live stream and schedule it up to go live at a later time. I'm gonna untick schedule broadcast for later. Now, if you are gonna be broadcasting to multiple places at once, simulcasting or multicasting, which is a big power feature of StreamYard, and we do select both of these platforms, then again, we get the option to enter the title and the description, but we could also customize these up for each destination. So if we press on that, then we come in here, we get to choose for Facebook or for YouTube, let's pick YouTube, and we get to choose the title description and whether it's gonna be a public live stream, unlisted or private for that. And up on the Facebook side of things, we get to enter the title and the description. And again, if we'd like to schedule it for later. So for this test, I'm going to just have YouTube selected and I'm going to switch it just as an unlisted video. And let's just call it test live stream. Uh, we'll leave the description empty for now and let's go create broadcast. Now we are entering the broadcast studio and did suggest that if we have headphones to use those headphones, there's me, I'm on camera. Hi, how you doing? So in here we get to set up our shot and we get to select which webcam we're going to use. So if we press on that, we get to choose, in my case, just the FaceTime camera or the Ecamm live virtual camera, whatever cameras you've got connected to your computer. But if we go down to show advanced then we can actually select the camera resolution that's coming into StreamYard as well. So I'm gonna leave it here as HD 720p, because that's the maximum for this webcam that I'm currently using. Under audio, we can get that set up as well. It's selecting my microphone here, and we can choose the speaker. So for this, I am going to choose 
the MacBook Pro speakers and you can disable your audio processing. So it says here, do not use this setting unless you have a high quality microphone and are wearing headphones or you don't have any guests. So what this setting disables is things like echo cancellation or noise suppression and auto gain control. So for most of us, it's probably a good idea to actually have that on. Now, if you're gonna be using a green screen, then you've got green screen settings in here as well. But there is a little warning saying that it will use more computer resources. So if you are using this on a lower spec computer, then your computer may struggle a little with the green screen feature. Okay, so we'll hit the little cross here to back out of that now, because we are all set up. I can give myself a display name if I'd like to customize that up. And all we need to do when we're ready is to hit enter the broadcast studio. So this is our broadcast dashboard. You can see me down the bottom here. It says I'm not currently part of the stream yet and uh, I can click to add myself to the stream. So if we close this one here, let's click on me down the bottom here to add to stream. And there I am now in the live stream. So this is a preview here of what it is you'll be broadcasting out. And you've got all these different settings and things down the bottom. This will come into play when we've got more guests and screen shares and those sorts of things. But this is where you can switch up your shot to make it look a little different. Now, if at any time I want to mute my microphone, I can do that down the bottom here under mute microphone. Under the settings here, I can change my name. I can edit my audio avatar, or what will be shown if my webcam is off. So the little picture on screen. So this is currently the default. So if my webcam's off, that's what's going to show. And I also have the ability to stop the microphone or the camera by pressing this button. So if I press it now, then it's saying that the camera is not connected and that I am currently muted. So it's kind of like a safety nuke switch. If you want your camera off and you want your microphone off, you could press that and you're gonna be pulled out of it pretty quick. So I'm going to start the camera. Okay, so over on the side here then, this is the chat window and it says this is where live comments and viewer comments are gonna show up in the side here. And again, it's showing YouTube up the top here, the little YouTube logo, because is where we had set that as a destination. It's saying we're ready to go live. We actually won't go live until we press this go live button. If we wanna view this video on YouTube, we can press here and it will open up in a new tab. Let's go continue to YouTube. And it says here, it's waiting for us to go live on our test live stream. Now, if you wanted to make any changes to the titles and the descriptions and things of our live stream before we go live, you can do that up here under edit to make those changes. And again, add an extra destination. So if we did decide we want to go to Facebook as well, we could add that in there, we'll close back out of that. Then under banners, this is where we can start to customize up what our live stream looks like. So there's some examples here that they give you here to show you. So this is an example of a banner. Uh, so a banner here is down the bottom. And it says click on a banner to show it on screen. So we can have text that we can enter on screen. Press again to hide it. Now with the banners, you can bring them up as just static text boxes like this, where you can have text that's either entered in before time, so titles and things for different sections of your live streams, or you can actually type them out while you're live as well. Now they can either be static or they could be scrolling, like that scrolling text along the bottom there. So I'll click on hide both of these. Let's go create a banner and let's say this is test text for this live stream. And if we go add banner, then it's here for us to use. And there is our text on screen. So I can hide that again by selecting on it. Or if I press edit, I can actually select if I want it to be a scrolling ticker along the bottom. And if we press save and now enable that one, then we've got that running along the bottom. Welcome to CNN News. I don't know what I'm talking about. So if we can hide that one. So this is how you can add the text easily into your live stream and have it all set up and pre-configured before you actually go live. And then over here under brand, this is where we can brand this up to match your company or your logos and fonts and those sorts of things. So you can see in here, I've already got one created for brand one, but let's start again from scratch. Let's go new brand and let's just go primal video and let's go create a brand. So this is the default stuff that comes in. We get to pick a brand color. So let's just go a light blue in this case. Um, we get to choose a theme, whether it's the default one down here, or we can change it to minimal. So it looks a little bit different. We get to choose a logo, which obviously the default here is their logo. Now, if you are using the free version, then that logo will be displayed as a watermark on your live streams. If you are on the basic or the pro plan, then you'll be able to turn that off like you can see here by clicking on it and it is gone. Now, if we wanna upload our own logo, 
We can hit upload logo. Let's select one of these and go open. And we've got one now for Primal Video Accelerator up in the top corner there. Now below that, you can also add in overlays. Now an overlay is a graphic that you can bring into your live stream. So if we click on their example one here, the StreamYard overlay, you can see we've now got this graphic up the top and down in the bottom corner here. So we can really brand up our live streams even further. Now the requirements for this are that you are using a PNG or a GIF or a GIF with um, a transparent background so that you're obviously able to see yourself through there as well. And it's got the recommended size here of 1280 by 720 with a maximum file size of 20 megabytes. So if you wanna add your own, again, you press the upload overlay button here and you can add that in. And to turn them on and off, you just select on them and they are gone. So we can turn off our logos and things here now as well. Now video clips, again, pretty self-explanatory. We can add in video clips. The example here is for a countdown timer. So if I press on this, it says that my microphone is now muted and it's going to do a 30 second countdown. So any sort of video clip that you have, you can upload in here to play while you're live. So we'll select on that to turn it back off. So some examples of overlays in here. Let's just say we've got this intro here that we made using place it and go okay. So we wanna bring in a title to introduce our live stream or a different section or a segment of our live stream. We can add something like this. This is a quick one that we made just using place it. So if we press on this now, that's going to play. So something super simple and it can have audio on there as well. And once that's finished, it automatically comes back to me. So you can actually control all of these things and bring up these different titles and things while you're actually live. And again, you just click on them and they play, or if you want them to stop, then you can just select on it and they stop. So really, really simple. I love this interface, it's so easy to use. Now it is also worth noting that with the video clips here, there are some restrictions around the video files that you can bring in. If we put our mouse over this here, it says currently there is a file size limit of 100 megabytes and also a maximum video length of five minutes. So depending on the videos that you wanna play in your live streams and use in your live streams, that may or may not be a deal breaker. But if you do wanna get around that, you can play things like YouTube videos just using a screen share. And I'll get to that when we get down to screen share as well. Likewise with the background, if I turn my webcam off or remove me from the stream here, you can see that we currently have a black background. So this is just the default one that they give you access to to use here as well. But obviously you can upload your own and you can turn it on and off just by clicking on it. And I guess where this really comes into play is where you're using some of these other picture in picture effects or having guests on and those sorts of things where it's not just a full screen video so that you actually are able to see that background. So I'll select on that now to turn it off and I'll bring myself back onto the screen here. And you also down the bottom have the option to enable or disable or turn on or off display names. So you can see that my name down the bottom there is on or off. So this is handy if you're gonna have guests on here, especially number of people on here, you can have up to 10 if you're on the pro plan, then you can have their names on and off. So I'll leave that on here for now for when we're bringing in our guests. And then you've also got your private chat here over on the side. So this is where you can chat with your guests that is private to the live stream and not in the public live stream chat. And then over here under settings, there's a few more settings on how you can customize up your live stream. So you can see our broadcast quality is currently set here for 720p. I'm on their pro plan, so I can select 1080p here as well. We'll leave it at 720 for this one. And there's an option here to shift your videos up if you've got comments and banners and things on screen. So it says here, automatically shift your videos up to avoid covering guests in certain layouts. So it's pretty cool that they've thought of this stuff so it's not just slapping up graphics and videos and having them all looking bad and overlaying over the top of each other. It's pretty cool that they've got some features like this to make it look good, but still easy to use. And again, we've got our camera and audio settings that we've already gone through and configured. Our green screen, if we wanted to turn that on and off here. And guests, this is where we can set up for our guests. And we can enable whether they can see the viewers comments or not. So the public comments, we can have it play a sound when the guests enter. So that if we're off screen sharing or something that at least we're notified when someone else has joined the waiting room. And then there's the option here that your guests must authenticate as well so that they've got to be logged in with YouTube or Facebook to be able to join and interact with our stream. Now, if you've banned any guests previously, then you'll have a list of banned guests in here. So I'll back out of this now. And the other controls you've got down the bottom here uh, is mute to obviously mute the entire live stream, stop the camera, which will stop 
my camera. Um, we can adjust our camera and microphone settings here. Now we've also got things like screen share. So if I press on that, then it will let us either share our entire computer screen and application window. So a specific application that we've got running at the moment, or we can even share a Chrome tab. Now, this is where I mentioned earlier, if you wanna get around the 100 megabyte file size limit for videos or the five minute video length, then you can play your video back instead through a Chrome tab. Just make sure that when you select, say your YouTube video in this case, um, you wanna make sure that you're selecting the box share audio so that that gets passed through to your live stream and to your viewers as well. So if we select this Chrome tab here, which is up here, and hit share, then we're taken straight to that Chrome tab. It says that it is sharing to StreamYard. And if we go back over to StreamYard here, then that is now showing up down the bottom. And I can add that into the stream. You can see it's already in here. And we can switch up the view. Obviously what this looks like, let's go full screen on that one. So that's full screen there now. Now obviously to play it, we wanna go back to this tab and hit play. And let's maximize that as well. So it's full screen in this tab and go back over to StreamYard and it's full screen back in StreamYard. Now, ideally you'd be doing this on a on another monitor, on a secondary screen and making it full screen and sharing it from there. But you can see that we're able to switch between the different views and different layouts here of having my YouTube video playing on screen while we're live as well. And obviously if we wanna stop it, uh, we can remove that screen share down the bottom here as well. So we'll hit remove and it's still there, but it's not present in the stream. So if I come back over here now, it is gone. So this area down the bottom will fill up as we have guests or multiple screen shares or even different webcams and those sorts of things that we bring in. They'll all show up down the bottom here. And all I need to do is hit add to stream and that's now in the stream. And then we choose how it looks. So pretty easy to use and pretty intuitive. Now I'm gonna hit this next button across the bottom here, which is to invite guests. So we press on this and it gives us a unique URL, a unique link that we can send to our guests. And when they click that link, they're able to be brought into our live stream. So we'll copy that and I'll go ahead and find some guests to bring into our live stream. Okay, so send out that invite link and we can see we've got Jen that has joined us down the bottom here as another video source that we can bring in. So I've got my screen share here that I can add in or remove. We've got Jen and I've also joined from my iPad. So if you wanna have multiple cameras, hey, Justin on the iPad, then we can add that in the stream as well. So let's add Jen in, we'll just go add to stream. And Jen is now on the stream, welcome. Great to have you on here, cool. So this interface down here, we can then switch between the different shots, these preset templates. So if I'm full screen mode here, then we can enable that and it's gone to Jen full screen. If we wanna kick it back over to me, then I can press the solo for me and I'm back on camera and vice versa, back to Jen. Now, if we wanna go a 50-50 screen split, half each, then we can go this next one here. If we wanna change up the layout where we're showing that background image in behind, if we have one set, then that will be this view. The next one, if we wanna have three people on screen, we can use this next one. So I'm gonna add in my webcam in here. And so now we have multi-camera, two Justins, one Jen, and we can switch this up here and change how this looks. I'm sorry, we're really taking over Jen. And we can change up the views to keep going through. So if I'm gonna be presenting to screen and then I wanna bring Jen back in and talk about what we just brought up on the screen, the Jen's back again. Likewise, if we both wanna be reviewing something on the screen or maybe a PowerPoint presentation or keynote, we can both do that here as well. So once you're actually live on YouTube or Facebook or whatever, you've got the ability to have your uh, private chat with your guests. So Jen here online now, I can talk with her privately or we can kick across to the public comments and we can interact with all of our viewers live as well. So we can see we've got Zoe in here, we can press on show and we can feature her comment here on the live stream, all while still changing the angles and mixing up the shot. And we can see we've got in the Wonder Years, Jen's channel on here as well. Welcome Jen, two of you on screen at once as well. Now it's now we're even, I guess. Um, we can bring up the comments down the bottom here as well, just by selecting on them. We've got Mel in here as well. So you can interact live with your audience, whether they are coming in from YouTube, Facebook, from Twitter, from LinkedIn even. So this works really, really well across all the different platforms. And then when it's time for you to remove your guests and part ways, and say we wanna kick Jen out of the live stream now, then we come down the bottom here and we hit the big remove button to take her out of the live stream, but she'll still be in the green room, so we could bring her back in if we need to or we can kick her out totally from the entire stream by hitting these three little dots down the bottom here and hitting kick from studio. Jen, you're about to be kicked out. Or if we wanted, we could even ban her from the studio. Let's just kick. And do you wanna remove 
Jen. Jen is gone. She's now being kicked out of our live stream. So really, really powerful set of features here to be able to customize this stuff up and interact with your audience while you're live with a really easy to use intuitive interface. Now I had my iPad listed as a video source in here before. To get that in, all I had to do was just hit invite. And again, I grabbed that join link and I copied it. I sent it to myself, opened it up on the iPad and I was able to join as a new source as if it was a guest. So I've joined in here again now from my iPad and we can add it into the screen. So if we're gonna do a multi-camera shoot or we wanna switch between different cameras, maybe you're doing this for a separate webcam where you wanna bring it in as a top-down view if you're gonna be doing handwriting or showing you creating something or making something. So this is something that's really powerful and really easy to do in your live streams. Now going back to some of those more advanced things that you can do in your live streams to really help take them up a notch by adding in things like these video clip overlays. If you are interested in how you can create videos like this to use in your live stream, this is something we knocked up really, really quickly using Placeit. It's an amazing service. I'm a massive fan of how easy they make creating video intros or, or title animations and things to use in your live stream. So definitely check out Placeit and there is a link down in the description below. So that is a complete walkthrough on StreamYard showing you how amazing and how simple it is to create professional looking live streams. So now that you're up to speed with StreamYard, if you wanna find out more about those animated overlays and video intros that you can use in your live streams, then check out the video linked on screen with a full step-by-step -step tutorial on Placeit, which is an amazing service. And I'll see you in the next one.